So Dan, this is your engine. This is the 440 that you dropped in. Your Challenger when it was brought here from California. You made history with me after 52 years working with engines. I have never seen this before. So what was the guys thinking of when they built this engine? I have no idea. Of course, we're gonna strip it down and build it my way. Nick's Garage is supported by Atlas Equipment and K-Tool International. Hi, I'm Nick and welcome to my shop here at Nick's Garage. You know, I build a lot of engines, 440s especially, and sometimes I find it very surprising what comes into my shop. This one here in particular, this one belongs to Dan from California, just outside of San Francisco. He bought me a 70 Challenger and this engine was apparently just dropped in the car and was built about 20 years ago and was never, never ran. But he told me, take out the engine, paint the car all pine white, the same like mine, like we have right here. And of course, build the engine exactly like my Kowalski Challenger, like so. This is what he wants, 440 Magnum. But to get to this level, We've got to do some changes. I know this hasn't been rebuilt, but one thing I never saw in my life before was the deck height. Now, the cylinder heads, I've had them checked. They're 87 cc. The heads were not shaved down. And if you can take a good look here, you can see when we removed the cylinder heads, he had the blue Felpro head gaskets, which are 43 thou thick, which are pretty thick head gaskets. Meanwhile, from the factory, they come with a 20 thou shim gasket, like so. Let me show you. Mr. Gasket replaced the 20 thou gasket because uh, Felpro doesn't make a 20 thou gasket, and this is what Christ used to make. And this is what I built every 440 with. With a cast iron head, just like my Kowalski, I use a steel shim 20 thou gasket. Of course, to raise the compression ratio, let's get more cylinder pressure to get more power and torque. And this engine, this particular engine, I took a head gasket like this which 43 thou thickness. And there's another blue Felpro gasket, which is a 039 thickness, which I use for aluminum heads. So anyways, just to show you that whatever the compression ratio on this engine was, I have no idea. But let me just show you guys what's going on. I tore it down lately, and I wanted to see what was inside it. And what I've never, never seen before is how far the piston is below the deck. You know, after having a thick gasket, a 40 cm thou, cylinder heads were never shaved down with an 87 cc. And now I'm going to show you guys how far the piston comes up below the deck. You got to freak out. You ready? You know, we're looking for compression ratio of at least 9.9, 10.0, something like that. You know, you want to build a Kowalski Challenger, you want to build at least 400 plus horsepower. Like mine over here, just another 440 exactly. Now, is this an RVE engine? RV vehicle? I do not know, but it doesn't matter. You know, anything under 8.5 is really, really a poor performance engine. Now, I don't know any measure compression ratio. We'll get to the calculator and we'll get to that later. But first of all, let me show you guys how far this piston is below that deck. So the first thing we gotta do is find the piston top dead center. So what we do is we'll put our indicator here. We're gonna find our maximum height. We'll take our uh, torque bar, and here we go, watch this. We're gonna bring the piston all the way up. It's called top dead center. Why is it called top dead center? That's when the piston goes up, and when it changes direction, the piston, no matter what speed it travels at, it's at a dead point at one time when it changes direction. So it's called top dead center, like so. When the dial indicator stops moving, that is top dead center. So we know it's right about here. Let's zero it in. Here we go, you guys. Okay. So here we are. This is top dead center. If you guys can see, look how far that piston is below the deck, you guys. Look how far. And just in case you guys wanted to know something, when cylinder number one is up, so the number six is up. 
So whenever you want to measure top dead center, you can measure six or number one, it's the same thing. But we always work with cylinder number one. All right, so here we are, we're at top dead center. I'm gonna zero in my, my gauge at the deck, like so. Like so. And now I'm gonna bring it to the center of the piston, measured from the deck. Here we go, watch this. 100, 100, 60, 70, 173, 170, here we go. 100, almost 170 thou below the deck. That's 170 thou. Usually a high performance engine goes about 20 thou below the deck. And you know, like this engine here, I built with, uh, on my Kowalski Tribute, this is zero deck with a thin shim gasket and an 87cc combustion chamber. So anyways, as you guys can see, if you look at it good, we're 170 thou down in the hole. I know these are brand new pistons, they're probably off the, uh, off the uh, shelf, but uh, when you're looking for power or torque, this is a big no-no. I don't know why they sell pistons this far below the deck. This is, this is unheard of, I've never seen it before. Yes, if you guys could remember Kendall with the 3D3, when I tore down that 3D3, that engine was 74 thou below the deck, which I found extremely too low. In many cases, I've stripped down 440s in my life. It's with an all 20 to 30 thou below the deck from the factory, factory pistons. Candles are 74 thou below the deck. And of course, we also had his pistons replaced and brought it top dead center, which in other words, zero deck. Now, in this case, 173 thou below the deck. What kind of pistons are these? I know they're not forged. I know they're cheap cast aluminum pistons but these are a no-no when you're looking for horsepower or torque. You know, whoever built this engine, for some reason, I, I don't know what they were thinking. Like, can't they see that uh, the piston's so far below the deck? I'm sure they took out the old pistons when they built this engine, but knowing that the piston is this far below the deck. Look, you don't even need a dial indicator to tell you how far below the deck it is. You're not gonna have any compression of that. And on top of that, you could have went with a 20 thou shim gasket, but instead they went with a felt probe, a thick one, 43 thou, even less compression. And I'm gonna give you another note. If you guys take a look, I had the lifters removed. It's a brand new cam, brand new lifters, and they used white grease to assemble the engine, which is the no-no, especially when you put a new cam in there. So I don't know what they've done. I don't know who built this engine. I will tear it down to go through the whole thing, of course, because after all, I'm gonna rev it up and beat it there when I built it after. But in the, in the meantime, like Dan told me, tear it down, Nick, and go through it. And of course, we're gonna paint it the correct color. It's not gonna be corporate blue. It's gonna be uh, semi-orange. So what was the guys thinking of when they built this engine? I have no idea. And these are the pistons I've been using on all my 440s. They are power forged pistons, flat top with the notches. And of course, this is a 30 overbore, which is made by JE Pistons. This is the part number. It's a 4.350 bore, which is a 30 oversized piston. It's a flat top forged with notches. And when you put this in on a block that's not being decked, you're gonna be roughly 18 to 20 thou below the deck which is pretty cool. You know, that's all you need. And these are the pieces I use all the time. And you know what? They work best for me, and here they are. And a 100% American made. Now probably all you viewers are asking, Nick, with the piston that far below the hole of 173,000, with the 87cc combustion chamber, head gasket of a 043 thickness, what's the compression ratio? I don't know. Let's go calculate it on my computer and figure it out. Don't forget, a factory 440 Magnum or a six pack is a 10.5 compression ratio. Some of them had 8.5 in the uh, later years on the late model 440. So let's say 8.5 to 10.5. So let's see what this one has. I do this with all my engines and we have a uh, 30 oversized bore. So a 4.320 is a standard bore of a 440. Plus 30 over, it's a 4.350 bore. Crankshaft stroke is 3.75. 
Head gasket bore is 4.500, just like I showed you earlier. Head gasket thickness is 0.43. Then they said, what is your combustion chamber? 87. I measured that earlier. Okay, the notches, uh, it would be zero because there's no notches or a dome on the piston's flat. So we put a zero for enter piston dome or negative for notches. And then again, here, it tells us what is the deck clearance. Okay, this is the magic number, you guys. 173. And let's calculate compression ratio. And our ratio is right there, bingo. 7.5. I'm not surprised. 7.5 is unheard of. Now, was this guy building an engine for power, for cruising, or no matter what? Whatever it is, didn't work for me, didn't work for many other people. So Dan, if you're watching, we're gonna take these pistons and we're gonna scrap them. You know, I don't know about RV engines, but uh, is there any engines 440 RV by Chrysler 7.5 compression? I doubt it very much. I've heard of 8.5, 9.5, 9.7, 10.5, but 7.5, I've never heard of it. And whoever made those pistons for whoever that manufacturer was, what were they thinking of? I do not know. And in the meantime, you know what? Now that we've got the story straight with the pistons and the compression ratio, let's take out the cam and see what we got in there. All right, it's a single bolt cam. Apparently, it looks like a brand new cam. It's never been used. Now, is there any numbers on it? I do not know. Am I gonna use it? Most likely not. Let's crack it loose. There we go. I'm hoping that there's a number on it so I can look it up and see what kind of a cam it is. It is a brand new cam, you guys, you can tell. Oh, look at that, it's got some uh, grease on it. Okay. Does it have a number? Yes, it does. Looks like it's CC Com cams. Let's take a look and see what we got. Fifty-two H twelve. Hmm. Must be an old number. I do not know this number by heart. Two fifty-two H twelve. You know what? Let me look it up. Strange. This is a uh, two fifty. Nah, I don't think this is a two fifty-two H. Then it's got a twelve. Okay. Let's see what this one has. No, these numbers are too old. I have no idea where they come from. And uh, I have a catalog here on Comp Cam that I don't think this number is registered anywhere. I do have a catalog right here. I'm gonna look on the Chrysler. Big block. Yeah, you know, this engine was built 20 years ago. There must be an old camshaft. Maybe they've changed the numbers since then, but I'm not so sure what this is. I will look into it further. I just wanna put a nice, simple 440 Magnum camshaft hydraulic flat tap it just like the one I got in my Kowalski Challenger and get around 400 horsepower with of course the cast iron intake and of course a Carter or an Elderbach carburetor keep it simple keep it original that's what Dan wants that's what we're going to build maybe try to get a bit more horsepower I'm not so sure I'm going to take a bunch of cylinder heads I want to take a look see if we can do some bowl blending give it some power paint it the white color hemi orange and of course when the car gets back put back the whole interior engine bay and also rebuild this transmission, which is sitting right there. So there's quite, a, there's quite a few things to be done on this. But the most important thing is those pistons have to go because there's no way those pistons are going to stay with this engine. 7.5 compression ratio was unheard of for me. And there's no way that you want to use the same pistons and cut the deck 173,000 to get zero deck. Then you weaken the block. You're going to scrap it. So I've got a set of pistons in stock. I'm going to go get them and make sure I can get the same piston to wall clearance because the pistons I have are 30 over the new pistons in the block are 30 over so I have to dismantle it check piston to wall clearance maybe hone it lightly and then put my pistons in if not if there's too much clearance then we're going to go to a 40 over thou if it's perfect hone the cylinders get the engine balanced 
and I started assembling it. So then, this is your engine. This is the 440 that you dropped in to your challenger when it was brought here from California. And uh, we're not gonna go with this. Of course, we're gonna strip it down and build it my way. So these pistons, if you want, I'll send them back to you as a souvenir, or I'm gonna put them in a the junk. But in the meantime, I'm not going with the 7.5 compression because I've never heard of it. And this is, um, you made history with me. After 52 years working with engines, I have never seen this before. I didn't even know pistons existed that low below the deck. Anyways, maybe they're the wrong pistons. Maybe they were made for something else. I'm not sure. But anyways, I'm going to get them out and I'm going to do the right way for you. Nick knows he'll get this engine back together the way it should be to make his client happy. And speaking of happy, we were so happy recently to welcome a great crowd at the shop. I just wanted to say if you guys seen our last live show, which we had a party here at my shop, which was on June the 3rd, it was a beautiful day. I just wanted to thank everybody because, you know, you know, we had a lot of people come from out of town. I want to thank everybody traveling so far, as far as New York, Massachusetts, Michigan, Vermont, Gatineau, Ontario, Toronto, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. And I want to thank everybody for coming so far just to visit my shop. Come here, see some friends, see customers, see the cars. And of course, have a barbecue and eat and whatever you guys want to enjoy yourself, meet people, talk. And you know what? We threw a few parties, but this one was one of my favorites. And I wanted to say a special thank you to everybody, a good friends of mine, Angel, that came by. You know, he made a special trip just to come visit me. And Angel, if you're watching, I want to say a thank you. And of course, the live band. How can you not have a party without a live band? So I wanted to thank Sam and the Backroads Band. With the, uh, it's an older generation group like myself. Came here, it gave out their hearts and sang out. And you guys, the music that went on was awesome. I gotta give them a great thank you, and they were great, you guys. Come on, everybody was out there watching. And while we were here, we had Bajo, the DJ, who also was part of the uh, Sense of Hope for the Jewish General Hospital, for uh, donations, for the uh, fighting of cancer. And we had a lot of volunteers that helped us with a lot of things. You know, Spiro was busy doing the chef with the hot dogs and the barbecue and whatever. A lot of work went on, getting drinks and cleaning up preparations. It was a lot of hard work, but you know what? At the end, it was all worth it. And I also want to thank Tony Belanger who contributed, and also George from Patat 2000, also that helped us out to make this party happen with all the contribution with the food. And I couldn't ask for anything more. And you guys, thank you a lot for everything. And if you guys want to support George from Patat 2000, and you can vote for him in the best fast food restaurant here in Quebec, there's a code, then you put your camera on it, and you can vote for him. I just enjoyed it, loved it. It was grateful for me to meet all the viewers. And many guys, you know, like, you know, you're on camera. You don't meet the viewers. Sure, I've gone to Motorama. I've gone to Carlisle. 
But every time we have a new occasion coming up, I always see a new face. And you know what? That makes me proud. You know, you see people that come here and they come here and they say, you know, Nick, came here for the party, but we came here especially for you. And what more can you ask for? All I wanted to say is a big thank you to all of you guys that made the long trips or whoever came here, showed off all the beautiful cars that we had here for we had from one end of the street to the other, all kinds of classic cars and, and, and just enormous amount of cars and the people that were here. How much more can I ask for? It turned out to be a great day and I gotta thank everybody for being here. And there's another thing I wanted to do on that particular day is meet people that I haven't met. And you know what? I feel bad that some people came in, never got a chance to talk to me because I was so occupied with other people and I was hoping to meet you guys. And you know, uh, I don't know who they were, but they came in and I read their comments after later on the live show that saying that, Nick, we came to see you, shake your hand, but we couldn't, you were too busy. But you guys, next time when you come by, please come by and talk to me, don't be shy. And come and shake my hand and I'll be more than glad. And I hope everybody had a good time. The weather was great. I hope nobody got a suntan and got burnt or should I say anything of like that. Now, I, people are asking me if we're gonna do it again next year. I'm not so sure, we'll see. You know, there's a lot of work involved preparing a party like this. You know, there's a lot of things going on. You know, and there's a lot of people volunteer to do a lot of things. But you know what, till next year, we'll know then. But in the meantime, I hope you guys had a great time. I wanna give you a big thank you for coming down here on our barbecue here in Laval, Quebec, Canada. Okay, it's bell time. And speaking of the party, you know, not only did I meet a lot of viewers and customers and I got all good friends, I also wanted to say a big thank you to all some people that brought me some gifts. 
and of course it's mail time. I want to show them off to everyone and I want to thank them of course. And let's start with this one was brought to me in person. Here we go, another bag of coffee. And we got a little note here. And let's see where this is from. Okay, dear Nick and team, thank you for your hospitality and hosting this barbecue at your shop. We are a father-daughter duo who love watching your videos. We always enjoy seeing what amazing work you are doing. Your hosting this barbecue really speaks to the friendliness, kindness that you show in your videos. Keep up the amazing work. Kaylee and Marshall from Oakville, Ontario. Thank you guys, thank you very much and thank you for coming to the party. Thank you for the coffee also. Okay, another gift that came to the barbecue and I remember this one very well. This is uh, one of our viewers that came from far, far away as from Atlanta, Georgia. Ralph and his wife. You guys, I want to thank you very much. And uh, you guys, I know you had a great time. I want to thank you. You came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. That's a long trip. And uh, I want to thank you for this Mopar logo. And I hope you guys had a great time. And thank you for being here. There was one interesting uh, viewer. And uh, I should say, I believe his name was Mike. Came in with a 69 Brew Impala. And that night he slept in the car to meet us here at the barbecue. And he brought in also a nice gift. He also, mad, he also brought in and gave me this Dodge Magnum Magic Wand. Very special, I never had anything like it. And of course, this is very special. And of course, a true blue Colorado plate that comes from Colorado. So Mike, you're watching, let me give you a big thank you. And I hope you had a good time here at the barbecue. Mike said, when you go to a restaurant, you pull out the Magic Wand and do this, and it's time for a champagne. And this is another viewer that was at the party. Please remind me your name on the comments because I don't remember. There was a lot of activity happening on that, that day of the barbecue. He brought in something from Don Garlitz Museum. This is a signed connector rod and also signed piston. And he gave it to me as a gift. Here's the proof of ethnicity. And I don't remember his name. I did mention it with him and I don't remember. Anyways, I want to give him a big thank you and also for coming over to the party. And thank you very much. And make your name on the comments. And now, if anybody does not know who Don Garlic is, but they call him Big Daddy. He always raced for Dodge. He's down in Ocala, Florida. He was a very famous guy racing for Dodge with a dragster. You know, these are Canadian rods that you don't use in a street car. These are made for uh, crazy drag racing for high RPMs, super lightweight. And you know, they have a lifespan of a few hundred races. And of course, you know, he had it signed, and now I have it. And this is a nice piece of history. Thank you, uh, whoever the viewer was, and of course, Don Gardens. Thank you. So those were the gifts we got in person from the party, and now let's go to the mail. <laughs> Here's one, and this one is from Ante from Toronto, Ontario. What did you bring me? You didn't have to get me anything, Ante. I told you that. Don't worry about it. Ante is a man who body, uh, his body, Rode on a satellite here from Montreal, and he's been working on a full 40 engine since then. And last year he came in with his father and Dino tested his engine that he built on his own. Did a great job, by the way. Oh, look at this. What do we got here? Wow. Don Gurney. Ah, oh, here it is. This is beautiful. Okay, let's see what we got here. This is an AAR Cuda. This was raised by number 42, Sweet Savage. Okay, let's open it up. Okay, I've never seen this one before. This is something new. This is gonna be something nice. Okay, here we go. Wow, check this out, you guys. This is awesome, eh? I just love these cars. Oh, it's screwed on on the bottom. This is 70 Cuda, double AR. AAR, All American Racers. Cool. And let's see what else she's got here. Okay, comes with a letter. Dear Nick, your barbecue was a blast. Thank you so much for putting it together. You gifted me and the neighbors some engine parts to help these kids understand how engines work. And here is a photo of Connor, Gray, and Abby. Thank you so much for your generosity. These are the parts that when Auntie was here in the barbecue, he asked for some used parts like crankshaft, and eight rods, pistons, and uh, I've given them to him, so this is what he used them for, so to show some kids what is an internal engine looks like and what it does. And I wanted to also, and we would like to return the favor. 
Here's a die-cast Plymouth Cuda for my collection. Wow. We ask that you share this model with the next young visitor to your shop as a gift from all of us watching back in Toronto. Thanks again, Auntie Caroline, John, and Tommy. Oh, wow. And it's a very, very grateful thought there, Auntie. Thank you very much. You know, of course, we like to all contribute to the new generation coming up with these old muscle cars. It is part of life. It is an American muscle car, classic car. You know, this is what I live for, and I like to pass it on to a lot of new, new generation, like yourself, like myself also. And you know what? There's nothing more than that than uh, other people enjoying what you love. Thank you, Auntie. And now we're going to the mail from the US of A. Here we go. And this is from Joelle from the state of Ohio. Okay, let's see what we got here. I've been to Ohio many, many, many times. Yeah, I've been to Toledo. I've been to Columbus. I've been everywhere. Okay, this is a self-addressed envelope. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Nick and crew, greetings from Ohio. Please send me a Hemi 528 sticker in the self-addressed envelope provided. I love your show on YouTube. Keep working on those gorgeous cars and drinking loads of coffee. Regards, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Thank you very much. I will. So we're going to put some uh, 528 decals here and I'll send them up to you in Ohio. Thank you very much. And you know, we only got a few left of the 528 Hemi decals. So I have a couple left and I'll send them out to you, Joel. Thank you very much. Next one from the US is from <laughs> Patrick from Rhode Island. Okay, Patrick, this is what you got us. Okay, this has to be very, very careful how I open it. Let's see. All right, here we go. Oh, long ram. This is a long Ram 413, I believe. Okay, here it is. Dear Nick, I originally discovered your YouTube channel and was instantly, instantly hooked. Growing in a Mopar family, my brother and I were die-hard Mopar fans. Johnny built and raced his 1966 Plymouth side with a 440 at Maple Grove in the crazy 80s, and he bought me a 1968 Charger, which he had put together. Skipping ahead many years, my brother passed and I went into another direction of hobbies and interests until I found myself back in the auto industry. By the way, I raced in Maple Grove with my brother Philip in Pennsylvania. Great place, man. Nice racetrack. A friend and a customer of mine reignited my love of classic mobile as I began my search for one. I was fortunate enough to come across the purchase of a 1963 Chrysler 300J. Oh, it's just like the one we're working on here with Mike. And a few weeks later, your YouTube channel of the 413 Crossram Dino Test came across my feed. Wow, talk about perfect timing. Since then, I've watched every episode and many others of Mike's 300J. And I've learned so much about these incredible cars. Yes, they are very special, let me tell you. As a small thank you, only for saving old muscle cars and bringing them back fond memories of my brother John, I want to send you a jacket of the International Chrysler 300 Club. I hope you enjoy it. Again, many thanks for all the hard work and the devotion. And I just might bring my 300J for an engine buildup one day. Thank you. Sincerely, Patrick. All right, now I feel like I'm a member of the Chrysler 300 Club. Patrick, thank you very much. This is sure something good. That would be very special. Thank you. And the next one is the last one from the USA. And this one is from St. Louis, Missouri. And from who? There is no name, so let's hope there's a letter inside. Okay, let's open it up. Okay. Oh, we got a stethoscope. Looking for engine noises? This is the way to do it. Hey, Nick. All right, let's open it up. Jim from St. Louis, Missouri. Nick, I am so grateful to your YouTube channel, both for the entertainment and the knowledge of what you provide. In 1975, the chief mechanic of my family's construction business took me to visit his friend Smokey Eunuch at his shop in Daytona Beach. I was 15 years old, and the hook was set from the, that minute. American Muscle Cars would be forever part of my life, ah, just like myself. What you change has made me decide to build my first Mopar. There you go. I've noticed that you listen to engines just like Smokey taught me to do during the one day I spent at his shop. My 63-year-old ears aren't the, the best used to be, so I've been using a mechanic's stethoscope, just like this one. It sure beats holding a long screwdriver to my ear. <laughs> I still do that sometimes. I hope you find it as useful as I do. 
And with thanks and kind regards, Jim from St. Louis, Missouri. Jim, thank you very much. You know, this is too much. You know, I do hold a screwdriver sometimes to hear the noise of an engine, but with this here, it's a lot easier. And Jim, I want to thank you. And of course, now you got into Mopars because of me watching us and with your kids and everybody. And uh, that's very, very, very grateful, man. And of course, get all the new generation on board. So anyways, there's our mail time for today. I want to thank everybody, our visitors, and everybody who's brought me gifts in the barbecue. And of course, mail time. And I want to thank everybody from around the world and our viewers, our Instagram uh, watchers, our Patreon supporters, and everyone else. And you guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And again, wait till Friday night for another live show. And I got, I'm going to say thank you guys, and I love you all. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Mix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content, and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>